Welcome to ART, where we are always reporting things. Thank you for joining us for last week's special on the skull structure of an anteater. Funny enough, today's report is actually about ART. We will be, thanks to United, traveling all throughout the world, where some of our finest reporters will be looking at various art forms from around the globe. You know what? You know, I, United Airlines is great. I love yeah, it. they're it's so nice. wonderful. Okay. So now let's go to our first reporter in the not so icy Iceland to hear what he has to say. Take it away, Sam. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. In the first few minutes, the aptly named Haima, which in Icelandic translates to homebound, an unnamed member of Sigurra states that it feels like it's his duty to return home to play for the people of Iceland. Fittingly, the film does a commendable job portraying just that. Over its 90 minute runtime, Haima gives us an ethereal view of Sigurra's unconventional music and the country they hail from. Intimate soaring shots of both the band and their island nation swirl together to create a rich sonic landscape that will entertain and exhilarate fans of the band, as well as nature documentary notes. Unfortunately, some factual omissions coupled with the relaxing nature of the film hurt the documentary in the long run. Midway through the film, I found myself and other audience members losing interest due to Haima's homogenous, soothing tone. Children might also find some of the concert visuals frightening, since Sigur Ross tends to come across as otherworldly and strange. While beautiful in its own right, Haima probably won't interest audiences expecting excitement and action, or who don't already have an interest in the subject material. How interesting! Yeah, truly, it was very interesting. Well, now we fly to the south of America to Argentina. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Argentine psychological thriller Elaura, directed by Fabian Bielinski, is quite engaging seeing as it contains all the main elements of classic film noir. Esteban Espinosa, played by Ricardo Darín, is a taxidermist who dreams of committing the perfect crime, and Darín executes his haunting role perfectly. Like Bielinski's 2000 film, Nine Queens, this film is about an average Joe turned con artist. The somber lighting, dark color scheme, pistol gunshots, and close-ups of the protagonist's worried expression all take us back to the classic 1945 film Detour, or the 1955 Spanish classic film Muerte de un ciclista, both of which are from noir. Furthermore, Bielinski's cinematic approach of following Espinosa in every scene provides viewers with an up-close and personal look how Espinosa's continuing lies start to transform him into a deceitful man, desensitized to the feelings and worth of those around him. Although a very slow-moving film, Alauda does a good job of showing viewers how deceit and unhealthy passions can ultimately, wrap, ultimately warp the human heart. While this film is good for those wanting to follow the internal conflict of an unlikely criminal, those looking for an intense action film should stay tuned for the next Marvel blockbuster. Wow, sounds depressing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this just in, Maddie from England. We all know and love the story of Mary Poppins and her quick wit and stern but fun mannerisms. The state production by B Brigham Young University of the Disney classic illustrates the story of Mary helping the, Bur the Banks family become a real family. The main themes found in this production include the importance of strengthening family relationships, being true to oneself, as well as the importance of having a childhood. With beautiful costume designs and set designs and backgrounds and exceptional dancing from the cast, these themes were easily found. The singing of Mary, played by Soraya Hopkins, falls a little flat literally and figuratively. <laughs> but luckily, her counterpart, Bert, played by Jacob Jensen, shines in every respect. The set and lighting director brings technology to the forefront as he uses projections to change the setting and to aid the audience during the number supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. The only caution I would give to audiences of, is of a song called Playing the Game, where the toys come to life to teach Jane and Michael a creepy lesson on respect. 
Overall, this is a wonderful family-friendly show that teaches the importance of family and how to care for one another. Lastly, we stay here in the United States for another report that occurred literally two buildings away. Over to you, Sophia. Are you a contemporary art fanatic? Well, I have a show for you. But bring your kids too, because the con candy colors will catch their attention. But if you're expecting a Van Gogh piece or to have a deep, moving experience, then this isn't a show for you. Escapes by Jane Christensen, an art student at Brigham Young University, combines different mediums to show you her personal escapes from reality. It is extremely aesthetically pleasing to the eye due to the pastel colors. There are pictures with glitches, childish wooden sculptures, and random pieces of wood piled throughout the exhibit. These installations are Jane's way of escaping. She shows different places she wants to escape to and creates her own reality. Most of the art is showing the audience is Jane's personal escape, but it is not really tailored to the audience until the last art exhibit, which is a video with, question, with the question, where would you go? I thought about this question for about 10 seconds and it left me sort of empty inside, but it's a neat exhibit that I would recommend you to visit if you want to see beautiful art that does not leave, but it doesn't leave an impact on you, but rather it gives you a quick little escape from reality. Well, thank you to everyone for the reports and good luck flying back. And thank you viewers for tuning in. Don't miss next week's report as we art about owners who look like their dogs. Thanks. Yeah.